This week, Tekken 8 releases, and to say this is one of the most anticipated fighting games in history would be an understatement. Over the past 30 years, Tekken has had one of the biggest stories in any fighting games, continuing to build from one installment to another. And with Tekken 8, the tale of the Mishima Family War will come to a close. And across all these years, Tekken has created so many memorable characters, so many faces that fans have come to love, so many fighters whose stories we can't wait to see play out in this newest game. But that got me thinking. What about the unmemorable characters? What about the ones who never even got a shot? If these are the characters that we got in Tekken, who were the characters that got cut? I always find cut content in video games to be really interesting, and as we saw last year when we did our video on Street Fighter characters, fighting games have no shortage of content that never made it to the final product. So today, in honor of Tekken 8, let's take a trip through the history of Tekken cut characters. Let's begin at, well, the beginning, and look at what Tekken 1 could have looked like. In 2022, Tekken's director, Katsuhiro Harada, attended the Japan Fighting Game Roundtable event. This is a semi-annual discussion where representatives from Bandai and Capcom and Arc System and so many other developers all come together to talk about the current state of fighting games. And during the 2022 roundtable, Harada decided to treat everyone to a surprise, as he pulled out the actual sketches from the original pitch for Tekken. Actually, that's not even entirely true, because at this point, the game wasn't even called Tekken. These were the earliest of early ideas, but it did let the world see how different this franchise could have been. First up, you've got a giant brute from Greenland who's wearing a walrus around his back. I can't tell if that's supposed to be an actual walrus that he's skinned, or if he's meant to be a wrestler and the walrus getup is just his gimmick. This is the same franchise that introduced us to King after all, having a wrestler decked out in animal gear isn't that out of the question. Speaking of fighters in animal masks, there was also going to be a Muay Thai fighter in a Hanuman mask who went by the name... Mr. Hanuman, uh, again the feeling that they were running out of time for this pitch when they came up with that name. Next is a young girl from India named Lulula Annie. Apparently she was based on Lala Soon from Mobile Suit Gundam, and it also says that she would fight with some kind of a, quote, yoga aura, because this was a fighting game made in the 90s, and apparently yoga was the only thing that game developers back then knew about India. Then there's a candidate for most illegal fighting game character ever, He's a scrawny scientist who would transform into a big muscular creature who would glow green, and he would be known as... Emperor Hulk. Yeah, forget Marvel vs. Capcom, Harada was out there trying to make Marvel vs. Tekken back in the day. I'm not talking about the game itself, I'm talking about the legal battle that would have ensued if this character ever saw the light of day. And speaking of pushing the lines of what's legally acceptable, the final fighter was Jean Clamandal, who is just Jean-Claude Van Damme. Apparently his name was even written in the notes, so they weren't even trying to hide it. Although saying that out loud, it just occurred to me, Street Fighter had Van Damme back in the movie game. Mortal Kombat just put Van Damme into MK1. Tekken? Hmm? Parada, there's still time for a guest character in that DLC season. Don't pretend like it would be any weirder than Negan. So that's it for these early concept sketches, and I think it's safe to say we dodged a bullet. I mean, sure, these designs might have been funny and how goofy they were, but I doubt we'd all be heavily invested in the Mishima family war if there was a dude wearing a walrus smoking jacket standing there the whole time. Also going to give a big thanks to Event Hubs. It was through them that I found the translations for all these notes, so thanks Event Hubs. Without you, I wouldn't know that the beefy walrus man loves salmon. Speaking of salmon, we now come to Tekken 3, one of the most important fighting game releases of the 90s and arguably of all time. Tekken 3 is considered by many to be the peak of the series, and it might also contain the peak of cut characters. In the game's arcade release, there was data for three characters who didn't make it into the official release. The first was Jun Kazuma, who was originally going to return for the third game. And if you know anything about her son and his story, having her still be around would have drastically altered the course of this game. But as for the new characters, the two remaining slots were for characters named Sake and Insect. Starting with Sake, a lot of people will think that this was meant to be a mysterious version of Yoshimitsu using Jin's moveset, but no. The reason why people think that is because if you hacked the game to make it so that Sake was playable, it would just be Yoshimitsu using Jin's movesets, but that was a placeholder character. That was never meant to be the actual version of Sake. No, the actual Sake 
was going to be a big salmon. And that's it. Yes, Kazuhiro Harada has confirmed on multiple instances that originally they were going to have a character named Sake who would just be a big salmon and no matter what button you pressed, they would simply start flopping around the stage. This was clearly meant to be a joke character, but the developers thought that this might be too much of a joke character. They decided to take them out because, sure, on the home console this could be a fun gag, but in the arcade, when someone had to pay for every single time they wanted to play the game, and back then it cost about a hundred yen or a dollar in order to play Tekken 3, they were afraid that people would put their money into the machine, pick this mysterious character they'd never heard of before, and then saw that they just picked a big fish who was impossible to play as, and they would probably feel ripped off. Although many fans do speculate that the Salmon Kuma uses in his rage art in Tekken 7 and 8 is indeed the legendary Sake. But I haven't heard anyone at Bandai Namco confirm this, it might just be a coincidence. Now as for the third spot, Insect. This was originally going to be, and I assure you I am not kidding about this, a giant praying mantis. When the team was making Tekken 3, a bug popped up that caused some of the character models to get a thin waist and long arms, and the developers looked at that and they said, they kind of look like a praying mantis. At which point I can only assume the entire room froze and then slowly a smile formed across everyone's face. So yes, this bug gave them the idea to include an actual bug in the game. And before anyone says, well that's just too silly, that's too out there, that can't be real, Tekken 2 introduced a boxing kangaroo and a boxing velociraptor. If there's a crazy animal you can throw into your fighting game, Tekken is there for it. However, they decided to scrap the idea, not because they realized the giant praying mantis would have insane reach and probably be broken. Seriously, how are you going to get in on someone with sickles for arms? But because the development was taking too long and they were behind schedule, so they had to make some cuts. But those were the characters who almost made it into Tekken 3. Those were the ones who actually had some work put into them. But there was another character who was considered, but didn't quite make it to the development phase. This character was simply known as Zombie Bride, who would be a zombie in a wedding dress. Why is she a zombie? Why is she a bride? Why is she here? Who knows? This is a character who clearly came from just mashing two words together that sounded cool. Which, in all fairness, yeah, that does actually sound kind of cool. As a fan of horror-themed fighting game characters, Zombie Bride probably would have been my main. However, according to the Tekken Revolution website, which has been shut down, but thankfully the Internet Archives preserved it, but according to the Tekken Revolution website, they cut the character because they couldn't think of what her moveset would be. Although I should point out this page also says she would have been the first zombie in a fighting game, and I'm hoping that's just a mistranslation because, damn man, how are you gonna do Lord Raptor like that? Come on, man. Know your Darkstalker roots. Although, the story of Zombie Bride didn't end at Tekken 3, because they actually tried to bring her back for Tekken 6. And you might already have seen her. In Tekken 6, they introduced a brand new character, Miguel, and his sister was killed when Jin bombed her wedding because he was trying to start World War 3 in order to summon a demon to- Guys, I think I just realized that Tekken's storyline is kinda silly. But yes, Miguel's entire motivation to fight Jin was to get revenge for his sister. And apparently while making Tekken 6, someone said, Hey, wait a second. Didn't we once have an idea for a bride brought back from the dead? So they actually did consider having Miguel's sister being the playable zombie bride. And this time, they even made concept art of her. So this wasn't just a silly thing that they threw out there as a joke. No, steps were actually taken to make this a reality. Also, it just occurred to me that in Tekken 7, for no reason, Nina Williams is dressed in a revealing bride outfit. This is clearly someone on the development team's kink. And I'm not judging, it's your game, do with it whatever you want. I'm just saying, if you think you're being sneaky with your interests, nah, you're not, we all see it. Now, speaking of ghoulish, spooky characters that were scrapped for Tekken 6, as well as talking about Tekken Revolution, many of you probably know of Eliza, the vampire who was created for Tekken Revolution and then later was brought over to Tekken 7. However, many of you might not know that the whole reason she was created for Tekken Revolution is because Bandai Namco held a poll where they listed off all of these scrap character ideas, and fans got to vote on who they wanted to become a real fighter. 
Eliza was originally meant to be introduced in Tekken 6. But the reason that she was scrapped was because multiple members of the development team got married or had kids while working on the game, and as a result, they were regularly called away from their job, resulting in the team being behind schedule, meaning they had to scrap some of the content they had planned. So yes, Eliza was originally meant to be in Tekken 6, and the entire reason why she exists is because she won that poll for Tekken Revolution. And I am bringing that up because I just had to share this. Speaking of that poll, for a while, it was actually neck and neck between Eliza and Sake the Salmon. And Hirata even mentioned in one of those fighting game roundtables that he was sweating bullets and checking that poll regularly because he was afraid he would have to actually design a moveset for a fish. Sticking with Tekken 6 for now, but getting less supernatural, you remember in the campaign mode of Tekken 6, Lars had a friend helping him out in the big rebellion against the Mishima Zaibatsu named Togo? He wasn't playable, which I always found to be kind of odd. Why would you create a character and have him be in the big story and have him be a soldier who we know can fight and then you didn't make him playable. Well, spoiler alert, but he dies in that story, so they decided not to bring him back as a playable character, although it was considered for a while. Apparently, he would have used a sword to fight, as well as having special moves where he could summon in an airstrike. And I would like to remind you guys that Tekken 6 didn't have super moves yet. That didn't get introduced until Tekken 7, meaning you being able to call in an airstrike just would have been a normal for him. You do his 10 strings successfully and he just nukes the entire site from orbit. But Togo wasn't the only Tekken 4 soldier who was considered for Tekken 6. And for Tekken 5, there was another character the developers tried to include in both games who they referred to simply as, and I'd like to remind everyone I am quoting them on this, sexy female Tekken Force character. That's a term I didn't expect to ever write down, but here we are. Yeah, in Tekken 5, they wanted to create a character who was a member of the Tekken forces. You know, those goons that you kick around in the Tekken beat-em-up mode? Remember when Tekken had beat-em-up modes? Anyway, they wanted to make a sexy Tekken force lady. Harada would later reveal that they named the character Zoe, and she was going to be from Texas, and she would be fiercely loyal to the Mishima Zaibatsu, so no matter who was running it, she would swear allegiance to them. So in Tekken 5, when Jinpachi returned, she would be working under him but they scrapped her because they thought that her outfit would be too revealing and they were afraid that would affect their ratings, and considering that this was going to be the outfit, yeah, they were probably right. This is not a T for Teen costume. Also, I love the fact that this implies that they were faced with the option of scrapping the character or just changing her design a little, and someone on the dev team stood up and said, no, I'd rather have the character die than cover up her butt. Was this the same guy who kept trying to shove brides into all the games, or is everyone on the Tekken staff just really freaky? But they did consider bringing her back again for Tekken 6 and putting her in the story mode as a rival to Lars, once again being a fiercely loyal Tekken Forces soldier who would oppose his rebellion. Now after Tekken 6, there were a few spin-offs that popped up. Remember the animated movie Tekken Blood Vengeance? It came out around the release of Tekken Tag Tournament 2 to try and raise hype for that game. It's not exactly the best animated fighting game movie, but it's also not the worst. It's... it's fine. But in the movie, Jin has a classmate named Shin Kamiya. He was experimented on and was implanted with something called the M-Cells, which Heihachi believes could be the key to immortality. Spoiler alert, Heihachi proceeded to prove that that wasn't the case when he killed Shin. But for Tekken Tag Tournament 2 and Tekken Revolution, the team did consider bringing him back and revealing that he actually was immortal and that he survived Heihachi's attack. But then that would have made Tekken Blood Vengeance canon, and this story is already too complicated, so they decided to do away with that idea. Now as I said, Blood Vengeance came out around the time of Tekken Tag Tournament 2, and this was Tekken's everyone is here moment. This game included pretty much every single fighter from throughout the series, as well as several supporting characters who had never been playable before. And yet, even though it feels like everyone was in this game, even though it feels like nobody was off the table, there was still one scrap character. Ganmi-chan, who was going to be a cheerful high school girl who practiced sumo and idolized Ganryu. Although, me calling her a scrap character is a bit of a stretch. Apparently, the developers thought of this idea and then did away with it almost immediately because they wanted to make Ganryu popular, and they were afraid that giving Ganryu his own Sakura would take attention away from him. I'm sorry, Bandai, you guys have been trying to make Ganryu popular? That's... 
That's been what you've been trying to do with him? That's been your objective? Oh. Oh, damn. Uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but we all thought that you were trying to make him a joke character. Um, like, if you're trying to make him cool, you got a funny way of showing it, man. Also, just had to throw this out there real quick, but as long as we're talking about female versions of male characters in the games, at one point in Tekken's history, they did consider making a female version of Paul. But that's all there is to that information. There is no concept art. Like, Ganmichan at least got a doodle on a cocktail napkin. There is nothing for Lady Paul. Harada hasn't even said what game they were considered for. He has simply said that the idea was tossed out immediately. Someone came into Harada's office and said, I got it, Lady Paul. And that guy didn't have a job after that. That's the end of that story. But before we get to the present, there's one more quick canceled character to throw out there, just to make sure that we covered everyone. In 2019, there was a mobile game named Tekken Mobile. And the game was canned almost instantly because it performed horribly and was loaded with so many greedy microtransactions nobody wanted to give it the time of day. But the director Landon Nguyen has said that he wanted the game to feature over a hundred characters, including the brand new character... This girl. Yeah, she doesn't actually have any official name. The fanbase has started calling her Shu Huawei though, but again, that's just a fan name. All we know about her is that she would have known Taekwondo... And yeah, that's about it. No real story to talk about here, but for that one person who was wondering if I would bring up Shuawei, you're welcome. And that brings us to the final cut character, at least the final one that we know of. In Tekken 7, the world was stunned when we saw that in addition to the returning cast of characters, Akuma from Street Fighter would be joining the game. And not just join it, he'd actually be a big part of the story. But Akuma wasn't the only Capcom character that Harada wanted to include in the game. No, no, no. There was someone else from the other side of the arcade that Harada had his eye on. Someone so surprising, so shocking, you'll never guess who it was, or at least you wouldn't have if I didn't spoil it by putting her on the thumbnail. Hey, listen, I'm trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and Morgan on thumbnails brings in views. I have no regrets. But yes, back in 2020, a fan reached out to Harada on Twitter and asked him randomly if there was any chance Morgan could appear in a Bandai Namco game. Because speaking as a Darkstalkers fan, yes, we do just go around asking people at random if they'll include them in their game because that's all we have to hope for at this point. But shockingly enough, Harada actually replied to the question and said that not only could it happen, they actually got real close to putting her in Tekken 7. According to the translation provided over on Event Hubs, she was apparently a, quote, prime candidate, and, quote, we were extremely close to contacting Ono over at Capcom for official permission. We had full confidence in being able to do her modeling and animation and having it do justice to the source material, but as for her gameplay, it felt like making it feel the way it should for her would take a lot of time, so we ended up abandoning it. We were one phone call away from a Darkstalkers character getting to live again. It's like the universe is toying with me. And it sounds to me like they weren't just conceptualizing stuff for Morgan, it sounds like they actually tested this out. Harada says that they were confident in being able to do her modeling and animation, which sounds to me like they might actually have done some test runs with her before they scrapped the idea. Which brings us back to Eliza. Harada says that they were working on Morgan back in 2017. But even though Morgan didn't work out, do you know who was added to Tekken 7 in 2017? Eliza. Why am I bringing that up? Well, here's gameplay footage of Eliza in Tekken Revolution. And now here's gameplay of Eliza in Tekken 7. Notice a few differences. Notice how in Tekken 7, Eliza now has a meter that she can build up to create EX versions of her specials or even do super moves, not rage arts. That was something that every character could do starting with Tekken 7. I'm talking about just regular, plain old fighting game supers that use up all your meter. 
You know what fighting game franchise has meters, EX specials, and super moves? Darkstalkers. You know what fighting game franchise doesn't have meters, EX specials, and super moves? Tekken. Yeah, the only characters in Tekken 7 who had special meters and super moves based around that meter were the characters who guest starred from other fighting games. Akuma, Geese Howard, they used special meters because they came from fighting games that required special meters. Eliza did not come from a fighting game that required a special meter. She came from Tekken. So why was she now the only Tekken character who got a special meter, who got EX moves, who got regular supers? Well, there's been no confirmation from anyone at Bandai Namco about this, so I will fully admit this is just 100% speculation. But I believe that when they were testing out Morgan, they created this special meter for her. But then when they decided to abandon that idea, they said, well, we put all this work into this unique system. Shouldn't we still use it for something? Hey, Morgan was a succubus, right? Don't we have a succubus in Tekken Revolution? What's that? She was a vampire? Eh, screw it, close enough. Put her in the game. Yeah, I 100% believe Eliza returning for Tekken 7 came as a result of Morgan being cut. And if it's not why she returned, it's definitely why she plays the way she does in this game. And as a big Darkstalkers fan, on some level, it kind of warms my heart to think that the tiniest little spark of ember from that game still burns today in some big release. Doesn't warm it as much as a brand new game would, but that's never going to happen, so hey, I'll take it. And there you have it, everyone, a brief history of Tekken's cut characters. As I said at the start of the video, Tekken has so many beloved standout fighters, and after going through all these cut characters, it is wild to think about who could possibly have been standing there side by side with Jin and Zhao Yu and everyone else in this big climactic battle. Let me know who you thought was the most interesting, who surprised you the most, would you have been ticked off if you spent a dollar on Tekken 3 only to find yourself playing as a fish with no actual moves? Let me know all that and more in the comments down below. Also, I wasn't kidding about our end of the year goal. We are indeed aiming for 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you haven't subscribed yet, then go ahead and hit that button and ring that bell to make sure that you get more content like this and to help us hit that goal. Thanks again for tuning in, everyone. Stay safe out there and come back next time.